into the second part of our Kickstarter series, a short series in Colossians. The sermon I preached from this section I called Continue in Christ. And that title I got from this uh, central imperative. Uh, the imperative Paul gives us here is central to all that he says in this section. Uh, it's always worth looking out for um, imperatives in Paul's letters. So imperatives, uh, verbs that are commands. And this imperative, continue to live your lives in him, is the imperative around which all the other details of this passage focus. If you are new to these videos and this channel, I do encourage you to uh, subscribe to the channel, like this video, share it with others who you think might find it useful. And as always, I'm going to dig in and just show some of uh, the structure, the details uh, that I've seen in this passage to help us get an idea of uh, what God is saying to us through his word. Every passage has a structure, and that structure shows us the emphasis of the passage, and that emphasis then needs to shape the way that we uh, teach or preach uh, the passage in front of us. And so I'm going to show you some of what I've seen in this passage. But as always, I encourage you to read through the passage just a few times yourself, familiarize yourself with the text, note down key repetition, uh, key themes, important ideas that you see uh, jumping out of the text as you read it and reread it. Spend some time praying, asking God to open your eyes to see wonderful truths about him and what it looks like for us to live as his people uh, that he shows us in this text. In this book of Colossians, we see that Paul gives us a really big view of Jesus and Jesus is in focus in this section again. Uh, we see that he is this mystery that he spoke of towards the end of uh, chapter 1 in Colossians, uh, the mystery namely Christ, in whom are hidden all these treasures. Uh, he speaks of their faith in Christ, uh, which was firm. And then he says, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Structurally, I think that uh, verses 1 to 3 go together, uh, flowing out of this, I want you to know. And then he says, I tell you this, so that no one may deceive you. And then, so then, tells us why he's telling them what he's telling them. It's very important for us to see that he's talking to a church as a whole here. Um, all of these, uh, the you's and the yours and the they's, are plural uh, so he's talking to them as a church corporately and it's just worth highlighting all the places we see this so this corporate nature of what paul is saying is really important here and the key uh, to understanding this is that we are to continue in christ together. We're in this together. We are united. It's a wonderful thing to be a part of a community of people who have been saved by Jesus, uh, striving, contending together. And so this continue to live your lives in him uh, is just showing us the corporate nature of our life together as Christians. And some of the things we see in this section is as we continue together to live our lives in him, uh, one of the marks in these first few verses, verses 1 to 3, will be seen in a, a tangible maturing together. So Paul says, I want you to know how hard I'm contending. Uh, that word we saw um, in the previous section where he was uh, contending to proclaim Christ to them. But I think this also he's contending for them in prayer. And you can cross-reference that uh, in chapter 4, verse 1. Uh, uh, 4 verse 12 at least, uh, where we see uh, this contending in prayer, uh, struggling in prayer. So both in prayer and proclamation, Paul is contending for them. And then he says, my goal in contending for them is that they may be uh, encouraged in heart and united in love, that they may have complete understanding. So those are the some of the things that Paul is contending for them. And all of these things are marks of maturity. 
So a, a tangible maturity will be seen in hearts that are encouraged, uh, fortified, this idea of, of standing strong. Uh, and we need each other to encourage each other in this uh, Christian faith. And the way we encourage each other, linking this back to the previous section, is we proclaim Christ to each other. Uh, from God's word in its fullness to help each other mature. So we need to encourage each other's hearts. Uh, we are united in love. Uh, the idea behind this word is that we are knit together. Knit together in love. Um, there's a, a, a tight bond between us. And this, so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding and that you may know the mystery of God and the treasures and wisdom and knowledge uh, that are hidden in Christ. So this mystery uh, Paul spoke of in the previous section where we saw that the mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory, the unfolding mystery that we see in God's word in its fullness that uh, all comes together in the person of Christ and Christ in us, the one uh, who unites us together. And we, so we encourage each other with the truth about Jesus and we want each other to grow, to have the full riches of complete understanding, the full assurance of what we know and all that we know, um, that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures. Of wisdom and knowledge. We want to help each other to mature, understanding more and more about Jesus, which will unite us together, which will encourage our hearts. No matter what we're facing, uh, we can be encouraged because of who Jesus is and what he's done for us. And then the second thing flowing from verse 4, I tell you this so that you may uh, stand firm. So how firm their faith is and he wants them to keep standing firm. So as you continue to live your lives in Christ, it's Christ who will help you to stand firm against uh, these fine-sounding arguments, uh, plausible arguments that will deceive and beguile people. So he's saying continue to live your lives in Christ together. Continue in him together. Uh, so that will help you to stand firm uh, so that no one will deceive you. And he, he's saying here, well, that he delights to see how disciplined they are. Um, he's delighted by this. Uh, he wants them to be overflowing with thankfulness as well. Uh, thankfulness is, is something that we see in Paul often. Here he's delighted because he sees that they are disciplined and firm. They are military terms. Uh, they are shoulder to shoulder in the trenches with one another, helping each other to stand firm and not being deceived by fine sounding arguments. Now, he's going to elaborate on verses four and five in the verses that follow in the rest of chapter two. Um, the, the types of fine sounding arguments that were being uh, thrown their way. But he's saying, I delight to see that you are disciplined and firm in your faith, your faith in Christ. Uh, they were holding tightly to Jesus. They were proclaiming Christ to each other. They were continuing to live their lives in him. And Paul delighted to see this. And so he says, so just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. Rooted and built up. Now uh, that word rooted there has the sense of uh, having been rooted. It's a past action. And uh, built up is a present action. So being built up. So having been rooted in Christ in the past and now being built up and then strengthened in the faith as you were taught, uh, linking back to the previous section, as we proclaim Christ from God's word in its fullness, as you were taught, uh, you will be built up in him because you have been rooted in him. Uh, so it's a, a beautiful picture of a tree deeply rooted in Christ. But we are rooted together in him. Our, our roots, as it were, intertwine as we root together in Christ. We are knit together in love. 
our hearts are encouraged by who Jesus is and what he's done to save us and unite us. And so as we then proclaim Christ to each other, we are being built up in him. And our faith is strengthened as we were taught. It's all about Jesus. Jesus is the one who we continue to live our lives in, uh, rejoicing that we are rooted in him, that he saved us, uh, delighting that we are being built up in him and our faith is strengthened. Uh, just as we were taught. And what flows out of this is that we are overflowing with thankfulness. For those who continue to live their lives in Jesus, a mark of a maturing people who are standing firm is that they will be thankful. Uh, Thankful to God for who Jesus is and for what he's done for us. Um, And this thankfulness is not based on our circumstances because Paul is writing this from prison. His life from a human perspective has been incredibly hard and yet he's constantly thankful because he himself is continuing to live his life in Christ. Um, He is proclaiming Christ because he has a big view of who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for him. He's rooted in Christ and built up in Christ and he wants them to also Uh, remember that they have been rooted, they are being built up, they're being strengthened in this faith that they were taught, and the result is seen in thankfulness. And so a clear mark of people who are continuing to live in Christ, people who are maturing, people who are standing firm, is that they will be marked by thankfulness. And I think we need to uh, ask ourselves, uh, am I individually increasingly being marked by thankfulness to Jesus for who he is and for what he's done? Are we as a community, a community who are marked by thankfulness, thankfulness to God for who he is and for what he's done for us in Christ? And as we are increasingly thankful, as we increasingly continue to live our lives in Christ, the result is that Christ will be proclaimed from us. And that's what we want. We want each other to be a growing, built up in him. And we want the world around us to know about this Jesus who we love, this Jesus who we are so thankful for. So as we continue to dig into this uh, section together, as you do that in your groups, uh, I pray that it will just thrill your heart uh, by who Jesus is and what he's done. Um, At the end of last video, uh, I said that at the end of the day, can we stop and say we've we've proclaimed Christ today and if at the end of the day we want to stop and say I've proclaimed Christ today then we need to continue in Christ day by day if at the end of the day we want to stop and say we have proclaimed Christ today we need to continue to live our lives in him day by day and may God by his spirit strengthen us for this May we be united together in this, rejoicing in Jesus. Uh, May we be maturing and standing firm and increasingly thankful as we continue to live our lives in him. This glorious Christ in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Well, God bless as you dig in further.